Dollar Tree DIYs for your front porch, your patio, or your deck. I'm Jamie, the Crafty DIY Guy, and welcome back to my channel. All right, you guys, for this first project, we are going to be making a sign for my front porch. Now, for any of you that watched my outdoor kind of front porch renovation video that I had, uh, I guess it was last week, um, several of you made fun of my little packages sign because it was definitely handmade. And uh, that little sign has been out there forever. It's just a way for the UPS and FedEx and, you know, post office to hide packages well I'm gonna make one that is a little nicer here and um, just painted up a board added some vinyl lettering from my Cricut Joy that just says packages this is very very easy to do if you don't have a cutting machine you could certainly use paints we are going to just add this vinyl to it this by the way is the uh, permanent vinyl from Cricut and I did also add this arrow kind of directing those packages to be hidden in the back kind of by the chair behind the chair I simply just added some twine and this packages sign has now been updated to this one now you can't see this sign from the street so this kind of works out perfectly this next DIY is going to be taking this Christmas tray. This was in the plus section at Dollar Tree. I actually loved the color and I had this bulk rope that I picked up at a yard sale. So we're just going to really do a very, very quick, just kind of revamp to this tray. I'm taking my rope here and I'm literally just going to cover the entire bottom of this with this rope. Now you've seen this type of DIY probably before. I think I've even done several rope trays, but with this one, what's kind of cool about it is because I am using the hot glue, this could be removable if I wanted to. Now, I'm going to add a pretty decent amount of hot glue, and this is the all-purpose glue from Shorebonder, and uh, I am just going to continue to add a decent amount of glue every time I work my way around with that rope because this is going to be outside. It's going to be kind of my vessel or my tray for some coffee cocktails when I'm on the front porch. That blue color, I wanted to keep it exactly that blue color because it goes really, really well with my front porch. And um, I tried to kind of mark the center spot with my tray. I didn't exactly get it right, but that's okay because the way that this rope is, it's, you know, you can kind of squeeze it in, you can kind of make it work. And again, you are just going over and over and over with all of this rope and getting all of this glue and just kind of holding everything in place. Now, for those of you that are subscribers of mine, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. But if you're brand new to the channel, hopefully you will stick around and become a subscriber. Now, when we are at the end of this, I am just going to kind of trim this off and then I'm going to use my little tool here to kind of tuck it in. And this is what the tray looks like when it's done. Super, super cute. Love the way this looks and it's super versatile. Now that I've got all of this extra rope, I thought that there would be a fun way to kind of create an accent light for the front porch as well. I have these green great kind of, uh, they're not votive holders. I guess they're like bird feeders or little houses that you can get from Dollar Tree in this great light bulb shape. Now, the uh, kind of burlap rope that's on the top here, it's fine, but the hole in the top of these is actually wide enough and it's kind of perfect for my rope. So, we are going to create a hanging kind of light with these bulbs and uh, you're going to see I have found something on Amazon that is absolutely incredible. Now once we've got our kind of lids taken off there the top of our light bulb we're going to pull out enough of our rope and I'm just going to grab a really long piece and then I'm going to cut it into three kind of different lengths. Um, I didn't measure this. I literally just kind of eyeballed this. I think I did one probably around, I'd say about, you know, 10 inches, one about eight inches, maybe one about 12 inches. And uh, again, this is really just dependent on how long you want your 
light fixture to be. Now, the rope does kind of fray at the end, but if you kind of play with it a little bit, you can stick it in through the hole there, and we are going to tie a very good knot here. And you could grab a like a pair of pliers or something and really pull that tight if you wanted to. This does stay pretty knotted up, so that's good. And then, of course, we are just going to kind of trim off any of that excess there. So now that I've got all three of my lights all kind of corded up, I think this cording or this rope really does look kind of cool, right? Uh, take your rope bundles, kind of tie them up. Look at these. These are solar tea lights. I grabbed these on Amazon. These will be linked in the description box below. They're about two inches wide by about two and a half inches uh, tall. And they are so perfect for this light. This is what the light looks like in my bathroom because I really wanted you guys to see the solar. And then I took it outside and hung it on the corner of my front porch. I am absolutely obsessed with this. I love the way that this looks so, so much. Now, whenever I think of springtime, I always think of flowers, and I love the idea of these wood slices. I also love the idea of these rub-on transfers because they're so easy to use. Now, I take my uh, transfers and I keep them in the plastic when I trim them off. That way, everything kind of stays together. Now, this You Are a Wildflower really, really spoke to me, and I kind of wanted to use it on this wood round, and I kind of uh, placed it there of where I thought it was, and then I just kind of freehand drew some wildflowers. This is art. This is not meant to be, you know, perfection. This is kind of my interpretation of these little flowers. I'm taking each one of my colored pencils and I am just kind of doing this very easy, just kind of starbursty kind of a pattern. And I'm using a lot of different colors. Again, just kind of eyeballing this and making it nice and bright, making them different sizes and just kind of adding them onto that wood round. The great thing about the colored pencils too is that this really does show up. Now, if you wanted to use some uh, acrylic markers or something like that, you certainly could. Once I had a couple of flowers kind of drawn, I did go ahead and draw a few little stems and then uh, I'm just going back in and filling in more of my flowers. By the way, the ring that you see on my finger there, I did buy that on my trip to Mexico. I went to Puerto Vallarta and it was absolutely incredible. That ring is malachite and uh, sterling silver and it was really, really affordable and uh, I have had it checked out since I got home. It's definitely sterling silver and genuine malachite so I'm super happy about that. Malachite brings a lot of like luck with health and uh, just your heart and so I wanted to have something just to kind of remember my trip from. Um, my uh, It's not the finger I wanted it to be on. My fingers were extremely swollen I guess because it did fit on my ring finger but uh, anyway go ahead and take your rub-on transfer and the great thing about these rub-on transfers is if you do something like this with the little stems you can see that you can overlap those a little bit because this is going to be clear. So I'm taking the end of my tool here. This is kind of a Cricut tool and uh, they have a version of this tool at Dollar Tree as well. And that kind of harder end of it works really, really good for this rub-on transfer. And uh, I am just taking my time and really, really doing this hard. Now my my footage here is kind of sped up, so it looks like I'm, I'm going really, really fast with it. But I promise you I'm not. And uh, I, again, am just wanting to make sure that this is staying in place. And uh, once I do kind of uh, feel like this has got a good... Uh, good uh, adhesion, is that the right word? Um, then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of peel this off. And the great thing about this is if you do peel this off slowly, if you see any areas like my little R there that were not fully uh, kind of engaged or stuck down, you can just kind of go back over. And this is how simple and how beautiful and how easy this is. I love this so, so much, so easy.
Anytime I am doing any kind of summer entertaining with these great dish sets from Dollar Tree, I always like to grab a couple of extra plates. That way I can create a tiered tray of some kind and we're going to be doing that. I'm going to take this acrylic kind of chalk paint that I have from Folk Art in this great navy blue and we are going to paint this candlestick from Dollar Tree. Now the great thing about using the chalk paint is that it does stick to just about anything. We're going to clear these plates, get those kind of out of the way. I uh, think I have my ring on. Yep, we're going to take that off to, so I don't get any paint on that. I love this so, so much. And uh, I am just going to paint up this candlestick. Now, I am just using a sponge brush from Dollar Tree, and I always just kind of grab whatever's kind of in the lid, especially for these small kind of paint projects. And uh, we're going to do a couple of coats on this. And um, some of the multiple coats are really just because of the way I'm holding it. You know, I can't get, I don't want to get paint all over my fingers, although you see I do end up doing that. And uh, we are just going to kind of continue to dab this sponge brush all around and it creates a really cool texture. It almost looks like sand, which I think is really, really cool. And uh, after this is completely covered and dried, then I'm going to use just good old hot glue for this. Now, the hot glue is kind of meant to be temporary because the great thing about hot glue is that when I'm done using this, I can just kind of reactivate that hot glue with my glue gun and with my, well, not with my glue gun, with my heat gun. And uh, we can take all of that glue off of there. And that means I can use those plates for something else if I want to. I can use that candlestick for something else if I want to. Now, if you wanted this to be kind of a permanent part of your kind of seashell shore living collection from Dollar Tree, then use a E6000 or super glue or something like that. And uh, you'll have the cutest little tear tray for all of your summer entertaining. I really love the way this looks. Such a classic Dollar Tree DIY. Now this next DIY is so, so cute. I was so excited. These square vases, these kind of rocks, these shells, and these tea lights, and of course these stencils. Have you seen these self-adhesive stencils? Go ahead and uh, you can cut yours off or you can just peel them off. I found out afterwards that you I didn't have to cut them apart. Although for storage, I do think that that was probably a good idea. It peels off just like a sticker. And uh, you just take this and place it down on your squared vase. And uh, I have to tell you, these are really, really good. I just went ahead and made sure I had everything nice and smooth down with my fingertip here. And uh, um, I was shocked at the way that this turned out. Now, I am using that kind of navy blue paint again, and then I've got my little sponge brush here that uh, is also from Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section, and we are just going to pounce, 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 up and down, up and down motions. Don't kind of dig in and don't try to fill in and squiggle around and wiggle around. Once you've got the good coverage, go ahead and hit it with your heat gun just a little bit and peel away the stencil. Look how good this is. I was blown away at how good this is. I love this so, so much. Now, I did repeat it with the second one. I did not even clean the stencil. I took the stencil and just laid it right back onto that other vase here, and uh, I did kind of smooth it down with my fingers. I did get a little paint on my fingers, but you know, when you're doing DIYs, that's going to happen. And then I just repeated the process with those sponge brushes again. Same exact motion. If you wanted to mix it up, use a couple different colors or something like that, you certainly could. Now, after those were dry, I did add a little bit of my kind of uh, blue rocks down in the bottom here. I did put my uh, kind of lighthouse up a little bit higher. That way that rock could kind of serve as almost like quote unquote sand. And then these tea lights that I got from Dollar Tree in this two pack. I love these because they kind of look like candles. Now I did add these into my vases and then I remembered, whoopsie, I have these, um, 
kind of uh, seashells that I have to do. So I took my scissors here and I was trying to uh, kind of grab those candles out of there. And uh, I was thinking, okay, what do I do now? And uh, this is a good tip for you if you're going to make this DIY. Grab a pair of needle nose pliers and just reach down in there. Pull those little tea lights out. This is kind of what you can do when you need to shut off the batteries. Now, um, I am going to go ahead and just add some of those seashells down in the bottom there. And uh, I'm just adding the smaller seashells in there and just kind of randomly dropping them in there. I think it'd be really cute, actually, if you just kind of mixed them all together. Then I added the tea lights. How cute is this DIY? I love these so, so much. My grandmother loved lighthouses, and so this one's definitely for her. We have another nautical inspired DIY. This little bucket came from Dollar Tree. Thought that this was super cute. I have one of those solar tea lights left. And then I have this stencil from that kit earlier. And then I have these white rocks and uh, this pool noodle and some red paint. So I'm going to take this little life preserver stencil and we're just going to stick it down onto the bucket. I do wish I would have centered it with the handle, but you know, after... I didn't really think about it until after the fact. So just, uh, you know, keep those kind of things in mind. I took my crimson red chalk paint here and again, just kind of up and down motions. I did have to do about two coats, I would say, to uh, make sure that that red really popped against the blue stripe. And I did go all the way around and then just for... Uh, you know, giggles, the poops and giggles, uh, saying I went ahead and just filled in the middle as well, just to make sure that everything was going to be covered because I do want that life ring to really pop against that blue and white, which I think you will agree did. The great thing about chalk paint too is if you have any kind of overspill or anything, you just kind of scrape that away like you see me doing here again. This is kind of when I realized that I wish that that life preserver was centered. I thought of about adding another little stencil, but then I thought, you know what, what the, whatever, not a big deal. I took my piece of pool noodle here and uh, just kind of glued that down in the bottom there because that's going to serve as a base for our candle and it's going to kind of take up some of the room because all of those rocks are going to be used in this. Now, uh, just for placement of anything, I did add that kind of uh, candlestick down there and then you'll see that I remove it. I go ahead and add the bulk of the rocks and just kind of make sure I've got a little bit of a clearing here or at least a semi-flat surface. That way I can put my little battery operated or not battery operated, that's a solar tea light that I picked up on Amazon. Again, they are going to be linked in the description box below. And then I'm going to add my light back there. But then I'm going to take these rocks and I'm going to kind of fill it in around the little tea light. That way it looks like it's buried in the sand. Now, other than, of course, keeping that solar panel revealed at the top, I still think this is super, super cute. This is what it looks like when the lights are turned off inside my house, nice and bright. I love this so, so much. I think it's just adorable. All right, guys, so let me know in the comments below which projects were your favorite. I think the lighthouse candle holders and the light bulb kind of outdoor light fixture is by far my favorite. Um, I can see myself having those DIYs in my home for a long, long time. If you're one of my long-term subscribers, thank you guys so much for being here. I truly, truly appreciate you. And of course, if you are brand new to the channel, hopefully you will stick around and become a subscriber as well. Until next time, time I'll have another kind of part two of these outdoor DIYs for you uh, coming very very soon. All right guys take care. Bye-bye.